Hello everyone and welcome to the Simply Colorful Fibercast. Today's date is September 18th, 2015. My name is Lynn Marquardt and I'm your host. Welcome. We have a great evening planned, lots of new things to talk about, and I hope you have a project. Let's just get going. I have a new machine I want to tell you about, and we're going to conquer the partial seam, and specifically we're going to con conquer the partial seam for one of our newest members, Kathy Kettleson. Welcome, Kathy. So glad you found us. Tell a friend. That's how we're going to grow. So thank you. Now, oh, and I have lots of other things like my rug behind me and some silk behind me. And I have my Evelyn Kitty here. And I have color paint to show you and more. But let's just get right into the machine and starting with our partial seam. This machine I got is a Sloan Ashland, and I can't find much about it. So please, if anyone's out there, and I want to thank everyone. I did post a, some pictures of it and a video of it running, and you'll see it running here. Thank you, Mark Kay, and thank you others for your, your comments. I think it was made by Toyota. I think it's similar to the Morse machine. I cannot find much out about it at all. I have another picture of the big one. It reminds me so much of the machine that I learned on that was my mother's. And so that's the front of it. Anywho, I have oiled it. I think I got it at the Brimfield Fair last Sunday. Oh, and I just have so much to tell you about it, but I want to get right into the quilting too so that for those of you who want to see the partial seam, I'll tell you about where I got it. I got it at the Brimfield Fair. It came with all brand new attachments and this oiling can. This oiling can is useless. If anyone else can tell me how they've gotten this to work, please let me know. I think I want one that has the longer neck on it that I can squeeze. This one, nothing comes out when I dab it. It was a nightmare. But I've oiled this machine. I've taken this off. I've taken this off. Whoops. I've oiled underneath and I think so I bought it for forty dollars US dollars and from someone who had a camper and he had things out in the rain and I think literally just the rain from this past weekend out of Brimfield caused the shell to get crummy so I'm literally going to decoupage it that's my latest thinking or modge podge it glue it all down and then just give it a coat anywho Enough about the decorative. I just can't wait for you to hear this baby hum. Now, Kathy and everyone. Oh, and before we get started on the partial seam, send me pictures, send me emails, show all of us what you're working on. Send it to lmarquedant at gmail.com, L-M-A-R-Q-U-E-D-A-N-T at gmail.com, or post it on the Google plus page for Simply Colorful or on our Facebook page and we will find you. Thank you all for all of your posts. It's great. And ple again, please share the love, share the program. The more people we have becoming fiber casters, the better and the more fun we'll all have. Okay, so partial seams. I am making a change. There's a key to this and basically it is the center square in any quilt block. And I am making the chain link pattern and I'm to the point where it's time to do the partial seam. This is going to be my center square and I've marked where I'm going to do the partial seam. But let me just put this down so that you can see it. I'm literally going to sew four pieces around this center seam. And the first, always remember when you're doing this partial seam, the first seam around the center is partial. Then everything else flows from there. So what we're literally going to do is we're going to sew partial seam here. Then we're going to sew this all along. Then we're going to put this here and sew that all along. And then we're going to put this here and sew that all along. And then because we have the partial seam, we're able to flip this over and finish out the seam. I hope that makes sense. And again, it all circles around your center square. 
You can do this on any type of center square and any motif. So let's just get started. And this we're not even going to chain piece. This has a reverse that I love. Hear how quiet that is? This baby is awesome! I of course told Bob that I have to document my whole fleet of machines. Okay, so Here's your first piece, and this is where the partial seam. It looks undone, but that's going to be key. But now on the bottom we have a nice seam that we're going to sew our second piece all the way to. And you know me, I don't really use pins. Unless it's really important. And this one, I'm still just figuring out my, my quarter inch seam. I tell you, this is better than my Singer. This is better than my Kenmore. The only one that it rivals, and I think it might even be better than my Bernina. Can you believe I said that? Okay, so here's the partial seam we started with. Now we just sewed this straight across. Remember, this is our centered block. In fact, I'm going to put a pin there or something so that we keep remembering. that our center block is where we do the partial seam. And now we're sewing things all the way around it. Okay? So, we did that. Now we've got to do this one. I'm so curious to hear how everyone's weeks have Week is gone. It's definitely feeling like fall around here. We both, Bob and I both worked, of course, and made time in the evenings for washing a few windows. I definitely have been in a great mood since going to Brimfield last week, and I think it has something to do with the uh, weather. It's just beautiful. Okay, so. Now here's our, here's our center square, we did the partial, we sewed that on, now we sewed this on, and now here's the thing. We have one more piece that rather than, that we need to add on. Rather than doing a Y seam, which is kludgy and you can never do it right, because we've left the partial seam open, that's going to allow us to make a very clean perpendicular seam. So I'm literally going to move this away, and I'm still, I've got this center square here. I hope this is making sense. We're going to do another one, too, starting from scratch. Okay. This thing is like a tank. So did I tell you that I think it was made by Toyota? If I look underneath, the numbers have T, T, Y, T. Okay, so now we've got this situation where, remember our center square was this one. Now I'm literally going to fold it over and continue. Remember the partial seam that we made right here on the center square? We're just going to continue it all along. And I tell you, I think this block, I should have told you that, this is the chain link block that there are versions of it available online. And I'm thinking I might use it as my leader ender because you make it from all two inch strips.
And as I say, I'm still working on my quarter inch seam allowance. Part of me doesn't even want to do a guide here because the body's so nice. Although there is some, what looks like some oil gut in here underneath the enamel. And this is all cast iron, by the way. So it was funny when I found the machine. And if you're like me, I see machines all the time. But they're often, you know, they have something wrong with them. They're just not, they're never really exciting. This one was really exciting. And so, of course, I didn't have $40 in my pocket, but I did have a credit card. So I asked the man at Brimfield, who was on the telephone. I love that tactic. You know, they're trying to sell you something, but they always just sit on their telephone. Anywho, he, he called out to me, $40, you can have the machine. So I played nonchalant. He must have seen, I hadn't been there that long, really. And um, walked away because I didn't have any cash. So then I guess I walked back and I said, do you take credit cards? Nope. Okay. And then I probably goofed. I'm sure I goofed because I walked away and I went over to find Bob and I told him I needed, I asked him for $40 because I had saw an oil can that I loved and he reluctantly gave me cash. And then I went back and then of course I start negotiating. Well, the guy must have known I went to get cash. Because I said, will you take 30? He said, nope, that's a steal for 40. And at that point, I probably should have said 35, but I knew it was a steal. For me, it was a steal. And so I paid him $40 cash and I walked away and when Bob ever saw me walking with this heavy sewing machine, I thought he, he really seriously, I thought he was seriously going to give me a lecture. And then in the end, he ended up carrying it for me, which I felt so guilty about because it is a heavy, heavy machine. Okay. So, not bad, not great, but that's how you do a partial seam. And remember, it was all with that middle square. That's where we did the partial seam. The first thing we did after we had the middle square and four units that we wanted to go put around it. So I hope that helps describe it. Let's make another one. And let's see who's out there. Like always, Fibercast is all about what we can get done together in 60 minutes. It's amazing what we can get done. And like I've been saying for going on a year and a half, more than a year and a half, there's no way I ever would have accomplished as much different sewing activities as I have without the Fibercaster family. So I continue to be psyched about this and um, as I say, Kathy, welcome. We're so glad to have you. And to all of our new members, every week we get new members, which is just great. Cleaning up the back of it a little bit. All right. So let's put that there. And I have cut out, actually, I said it was one inch, I mean two inch, two inch strips that we make all this, with the exception in the corner, these are three and a half inch squares. So I do have that. But let's see who's out there. Oh, KB in Pennsylvania, hi. Right off the bat, let's see what we have here. No way. Remember a week ago, Karen wrote to us during Fibercast and she said it's like Project Runway around here. She was making a Batman costume for Halloween. 
Check this out. <laughs> this is as good as your witch costume. That is KB in her Batman costume. I love it. I love your expression, you hot ticket. Ah! Oh, and she sends us more. She says, my dress form has a bust that my 23-year-old male client does not. Oh, this is for a client. Nice. But my ought light padded with some pillowcases makes a good head form. Ah! Check this out. Oh, Karen, that is great. Oh, that is great. Hey, Jean. Hi, Jean. Jean, Jean, Jean the Jumping Machine. I have to tell you that I was so impressed with the 300th anniversary celebration last week here in Hopkinton. You outdid yourself, you and the whole team, that I know you've been working on this for years, literally. And for all of you out there, it was a full weekend of really fun things. A new fountain or a refurbished fountain was turned on in the center of town on Friday night. That's why Jean wasn't with us last Friday night. And then on Saturday, there were all sorts of arts festivities at Poly Arts, and then food trucks and music and fireworks. And then on Sunday, a parade to beat all parades right through the center of town. So 300 years strong and going. And Jean says she's binding a quilt and she's working in her new jammies from Target. Did everyone see the Target jammies? I wonder if they're all gone now. And now, Jean, we're going to need those when we go to Missouri. So I have to get over there. I may have to, to punt if I can't find them. And I do have an idea for another pair of jammies. Oh, and you like the block. As I say, I found it online. It's called Chain Link Block. And it's I have it in three different sizes. Go online, look for Generations Quilt Patterns. It's right there online. Um, so welcome. Who else is out there? Kathy Kettleson. She says, most people call me Kathy K. Hi, Kathy. Well, Kathy K, that's what I will try to remember to call you. We have KB. That's Karen Bryant, her maiden name. That's my sister. She's out in Pennsylvania. And then we have KK out in San Diego. That's Karen Cluen. So Kathy K. We have KB, KK, Kathy K. Anyway... My oldest child had to write his name Josh K due to there were other Joshes in his class. So that Mother's Day, he made me the sweetest Mother's Day card and wrote to Mama K. Huh? It's so sweet. And after that, my coworkers started calling me Kathy K, and now that is what I'm called, along with other names. She says. This will be very long-winded, so I thought I would send this to you before your show. Oh, this is exciting. Well, let me share this with folks, and then we'll come back to this. Kathy Kay is from Champaign, Illinois. Yay! Home of the University of Illinois. Go Illini. I hope I said that right. Kathy has four grown children, two boys and two girls. Aw. And she says they're the best people I know. She says, I must tell you all that I'm a huge Cubs fan and I love to piece quilts. Oh, isn't that fun? We have a lot of sports fans, too. The Cubs are a great team. Didn't our manager from the Red Sox go out to the Cubs? Now I can't remember his name. Ah. Oh. Let me come back to this. Kathy, I'm so glad you dialed in. Leslie Turner. Hi, Leslie. She says, here's Raggedy. I have half the hair done. We'll send that next. Don't know how to send two at once. I hear you. Hope to catch you tonight. Just figured it out. Oh, guess my daughter gave me early. Oh, 
an AccuQuilt Go. Isn't that great? For this, this quilt pattern, that's what I'm using. The AccuQuilt Go with the two inch, um, actually the one and a half inch ones. There's even a smaller size that I'm going to use the Go for. And I can do it with the two and a half inch. So these actually I did not use the Go with, but for either side I can and I will. <laughs> so Leslie's daughter gave her the AccuQuilt Go. She said it has a six month warranty, so she gave it to me now. She loves it. Thanks for all you teach us. Keep up the good work, Leslie. Oh, thank you for all you teach me. Oh, she's awesome. And she's 100 years old this year, right? Oh, isn't she great? She looks like a big size. Here, I think you did attach the other one. That's perfect. Are you liking the hair? Leslie, I love it. That looks perfect to me. It looks like you even did more than I re recommended, which you put even another row around the head first. That's even better. Excellent. I love hearing that. Oh my goodness, KB back out with Batman. Here is her inspiration picture. You have to see this. Hello, Batman. Can everyone see that? So then if we scroll down, Karen says she's working on the cape tonight. So we've seen that. Oh, Karen, send us the picture. Oh, Marquet, our vintage machines expert. She says, hello, Lynn and the Fibercast gang. I will be sewing on periwinkles and tumblers, which I've already sent you a picture of them, so won't send them again. Yes, I remember last week or the week before. But while I'm sewing, I will be thinking of this. A blonde maple 1956 sewing cabinet with a Singer 301A, but the one I will be looking at doesn't have the stool. Here are a few pictures. Have a great weekend. <gasps> that is a beauty. Marquet and everyone else who has said that once you buy one of these machines, you're hooked, and now I am understanding why. Oh, even if yours doesn't have the stool, I bet you could make one or find a substitute. That's the thing with this being portable. I think I'm going to look for a, a uh, sewing stand. In fact, I think maybe, Mom, if you're out there, maybe you have a sewing machine cabinet. That's what I'm looking for, a sewing machine cabinet. Sue Norton, hi. Boy, with all these notes, I'm not going to get much sewing done, but I'm so glad you're all out there. Sue shows us what she's working on. This is my latest quilt out of all batiks. She's been on vacation all week. It's been a pretty good week. Started out my week with getting a new car, my old car of 14 years, and I have had no air conditioning for the last six years. Good for you. You deserve it. 14 years is a good long run. So she treated herself to a new Jeep Renegade. P pictures below, she loves it. Oh. oh. Well, first things first. Here is here are the the square the quilt squares. I don't know if you can see that. I know it's a little dark. Let's go look at the Oh, awesome. Oh, she's a pretty color. Oh, I love that rust color, just a rusty orange, right? <gasps> Beautiful. Perfect for fall. Maxine, hi Maxine Taylor. She shared a video with us. She says, love your new toy. Thank you, Maxine. I think you were, you were one of the ones who said, welcome to the dark side, right? She says, I'm looking for an old girl for myself, too. The one I had, got it, the one she got at Goodwill, was too far gone, so she went to the graveyard for machines. She was a Nelco, also looking for a treadle for my mom. Okay. Well, we will keep our eyes open. Hey! 
And Kathy Kettleson says the partial seam makes sense. Yay! I'm glad to hear that. I'll go back to your, your note later on. I best get working on another block. And since I mentioned my mother, I have a surprise. Mom, if you're out there, I made you a new mug rug. It's going in the mail tomorrow. I made her and my dad one. It wasn't that long ago, maybe maybe 12 or 13 years ago. And they've been putting their hot mugs on it every day. And the middle, actually, from the con I think, or maybe, I don't know, maybe it's the cold drinks, but somehow it literally, the middle rotted. And I, that was burlap, so this is done in linen, Mom, so hopefully it'll last a little longer. It's on its way. Anyway, let's get going. And I must have a window open somewhere because I have little bugs without a screen, which makes sense because I washed one of the windows over here and I didn't put the screen back in. So if you see bugs flying around, that's why. Okay, so, oh, Cal Kathy, I'm so glad that you're on and that it made sense. Because I had to reteach myself too. So the middle square is where the partial seam is going to go. But first, we have to make all four pieces that go onto it. And that is really quite easy, and we can do some chain piecing. So we literally create two of these. say I couldn't even find a good video that showed me how to how to oil this machine but I did see you know I found I've oiled machines before my Ken Moore and and others my singer one of the 1950s machines and I think it was a Necky not a Nelco I think it was Necky you just you screwed off the top and then you could oil right down in here this one you can't screw off the top. I could screw this big piece off, and I swear this piece alone weighs five pounds. This thing is so heavy. And I could take this back piece off, and I could go in there and oil that way. I love having this motor. It's like a an industrial strength motor. Okay, so go backwards. And I believe it takes size 15 needles, like the singer. And it's funny, I have been looking for a Morse. I've been looking for one of these 1950s industrial machines for a long time, actually. I think my mother's was an alder, I think, or maybe a white, but it sure feels a lot like this one. This one, what I did find was in a 1957 Life magazine, they advertised it. From what I can tell, I really, it, it's... It's the darndest thing. I cannot find much about it. So anyway, so we've done these four. And then literally, we put a three and a half inch square up next to it. Two blues and two reds. Oh, my kitty. My Evelyn kitty. And Marquet. And people have asked me, ooh, I, I've got to, I can't wait to hear about your 301A, Marquet. But Marquet asked me what I'm going to name my machine. And do you know, I don't have names for any of my machines. I feel very behind. <laughs> I've got to get to it. Part of me wanted to call this one Oil Can, but it didn't sound very feminine because I had told Bob that I was going to buy an oil can. Which ends up being a dud, by the way. Mm 
And now I can fully appreciate wanting to know where this machine has been. If only it could talk. Who has sewn on it? What? Um, how did this little piece get there? Um, who didn't sew on it? I think this, this beauty has spent a lot of time in someone's closet. But you just, there's no way to know. But you know what I'm thinking? That in our future, we are going to be able to solve this. And you know how we're going to solve it? Remember I've talked about the Internet of Things and how there are going to be chips in everything that are sensing everything? Like in your refrigerators, how there are chips there that are sensing um, how cool or how much electricity it uses, how cool or hot it goes. There are sensors going in everywhere. Sensors in our watches, in our pacemakers, in our glasses, in our everything around us. Ultimately, this, and a lot of them probably already do, the Berninas of the world may call home. They're going to have chips, and we're going to know. We're going to be able to see everything about it. Ah. Okay, so now we have four of these. That's right. Now what we do is we take the corner and we do four more. But it's like quilts themselves. Don't you want to know? Although I never have had this... Quilts are just so utilitarian. I don't think of them as lasting forever for whatever reason, even though many of us do have very old ones. This machine, this machine could last forever if we take care of it. Another thing I did this weekend, this week, I mean, during one of my lunch hours, I'm trying to take lunch hours now, was I went over to the Benjamin Moore paint store and I was looking for new paint for downstairs because now that Bob is finishing up the woodwork and then he'll plaster the holes around the woodwork it's time to give to paint downstairs. For those of you who may may not know this, we built this house in 2006 and we're still building it. It's a work in progress. So that before we moved in, the walls were painted one, you know, the we we hired people to come in with a big spray gun, they wear the the white vest white outfits from head to toe, and they just sprayed with primer. And then we painted one coat, I think it was just one coat, of cheap paint, because it's all we could afford from Lowe's. The colors have never been ideal. So anyway, I went over to Benjamin Moore, and I'm, I'm looking at different colors. I'd love people's recommendations. If you have any recommendations for Benjamin Moore colors that you're really liking, let me know. Um, okay, I have to look at my sample here. Okay, so put my red here. Anywho, I also picked up some paint for the garage bedroom down at my mom's house. <laughs> I think I may have told you that I ordered a recliner, a new chair for out there, to go with the TV. And we're going to get new beds. And it also needs a fresh coat of paint. 
I believe that those walls were painted in 89, if, my, if I'm recalling right, that that's when that room was built. So Sue Norton, like you get a car every 14 years, we might as well paint every 89, 99, 2009, every 26 years, don't you think? So let me show you the colors I got. The recliner is a blue color that is may look even a little bit old-fashioned. It probably does. I labored over it. It's a lazy boy. And if I if I could have been totally whimsical, there were some cool designer fabric that you could put on on it. But I was worried about changing my mind and not liking it after a few years and it was going to probably cost extra. So anyway, got that. And then the walls are going to be Benjamin Moore Constellation color. And then the, um, not the trim. The trim is stained. We're going to keep that. But then maybe the, the shelves where the birds are on will be this color. And... When I was looking for fabric to do today's quilt, I found some William Morris, some Moda fabrics here that I got. When did I get this? You all can probably remember. It was on some business trip. So I'm just, the colors could not match better. And I'm just going to make straight squares for a quilt for one of the new beds. So that's pretty fun. Here's a picture of the room. Benjamin Moore's color books are beautiful. I hope they don't mind me showing them. Like they have one color language. That's cool. But I'm just going to show you the one, this one. So that color of the wall is the color we're going to paint it. I like it. Constellation. And then the trim is called Frost Line. Huh. Nothing like a little paint to cheer you up. Okay, so let's put that aside. I told you I had things to show you. Okay, one, two, now let's get some blues. Hmm. And I may have goofed. Let's see. It does feel nice to piece again. We're going to do our mystery quilt starting at the end of January and going to, actually, beginning of February, and then it'll end up in March. For anyone who's interested, even if you don't make the quilt, sometimes it's fun just to see what, what each step looks like. Now, let's see what is going wrong here. Okay, that's not going wrong. That's right. <laughs> and that's right. Okay, so now, oh, this is what I did wrong. <clears throat> Where's my seam ripper? I can't believe it. Even my beauty makes mistakes. Oh, and she makes beautiful stitches. Straighter than my Bernina, I swear.
So Jean, if you're out there, and Chris, if you're out there, I am going to do some research on Missouri this weekend, and I'll send you guys some proposals. Jean, you deserve a trip, a fun trip for yourself, after all the work you've done. I cannot believe how much work, how big a celebration it was. I wonder if Norma's out there, and Maggie, and Anne, and KK out in San Diego. I hope you're well. I know you're in the midst of some of your daughter's health continuation, and we're thinking of you. So here's a note for anyone who does this, does do this pattern. You have to be careful where you sew the corner squares onto, the direction. I must have just gotten lucky when I did the squares before we went on. So what else has been going on? We've been doing, like I say, I've been doing chores. I even cleaned some of my closet. I do have to go to New Orleans next Friday night, actually. So I should tell you a little bit about my schedule just to, so that we're all on the same page. Next Friday night at this time, I will be at an awards show for state government website designers. So I definitely won't be here, unfortunately. Although that'll be fun, too, to be down in New Orleans, something different. So I'll take a few pictures. But, um, or and so, I will probably pre-record a show on Thursday night. I'll let you know. Or let me know if you want to do one live a different time. Um, then the following weekend, I have sent a note to Violet, another niece of ours, who is also making a quilt with her grandmother. And she wanted to come on, and, and I wanted to have her come on and show you all what she's making. And I'm thinking maybe, Mom, if you're up for it, the week after next... We might be coming to you from the vineyard instead of from here. And we'd have um, Violet as our guest. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm kind of springing it on my mother right now. I meant to call her. to this baby's hum. Oh, and it even I can lower the feed dogs up and down so I can ultimately do free motion quilting with this. The feed dogs are all the way down. Check this out. You can just pop this down. If you want to pop it up, you literally push it. This is like a Cadillac of machines. Can you tell I'm pretty excited about this? <laughs> oh, and the other thing. The, my rug, I finished my other rug. I whip stitched all the way around it. I haven't blocked it yet, but at least it's all whip stitched. And it's basically, well, it's over there, so I can't really get it. But it's ready to go on the floor once we are petless. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, that's interesting. I wonder why I'm getting some puckering. I think it's because... So the bobbins, I've not done a bobbin on the machine yet. I'm using literally bobbins that were pre-threaded. And this one happens to have red in it. And it was really tightly wound. 
So I'm thinking maybe that's why the tension's a little off. Hmm. Oh, looks like, there we go. I can see why, even though the featherweight was technically made before these big industrial machines, but there's no way you'd carry this to an off-site. It's too heavy. So I can see why the featherweights were so popular. And portable. Okay, so now we are ready to do another partial seam. So Kathy, I know if you were here, you could show us how to do it. I'm just gonna put these aside, but we'll just go over it one more time so that we all know it. The key is to start with your center square and do the partial seam on the first sew. put a different bobbin thread in. The reason being, oh look at this, they had put different colors of thread in here. The reason I'm switching it out is that the tension all of a sudden is off. <laughs> How many minutes did that take? 50 minutes. My Cadillac is now having problems. There, I think that'll be better. Okay, so anyway, we just did our partial seam. And laying this particular square, it really is, I'm finding it helpful to lay it out and then just pick up the pieces. It's easy to goof it up. better. I think I'll have better luck if I do iron after each section. Oh, it is fun to piece Other things can we talk about? Okay, now here we're going to find out the magic of the partial seam. Remember we did the partial seam? Now we're going to do this very last one. Thank you. 
now, now we have this, and thanks to the partial seam, we can go here. So who wants to take bets that Marquet comes home with a 301 tonight? Marquet, you have to let us know. Sandra, down in Mississippi, I hope you're doing well. I'm curious what the weather is down there. <laughs> Do you remember Sarah Kokanowski, who was here a few weeks ago, showing us all of her knitting, and she's been here before. She and her husband, Steve, are out in Arizona, Sedona, Vegas, and I think the, the Grand Canyon. And there's another. Two of them. Well, I think this is going to be a fun pattern. I hope now, just as a final reminder, when you do the partial seam, and for this particular example, the center square is the key, do the half seam on the first seam, and then work all your way around. See who's out there. Ooh, Carrie. Hi, Carrie. I haven't seen you in a long time. Carrie says, oh. Hi, Miss Lynn. Doing a bit late packing for Maine. Ooh. Oh, I bet it's beautiful up there. Carrie has a place up there that she goes to on the weekends. Closing this weekend. Oh, that's too bad. Hoping you've been having fun and September has been productive. I have. I love it. I've been busy. Kids and quilting. Here are two projects. Above is a mini holiday quilt. Supposed to be a bi-monthly project with Catherine at the Dragonfly. The Dragonfly Quilt Shop is near us, I think in Bellingham. I got carried away, even added a row, not on yet. Below are my row by rows, a few not pictured due to being in various states of making 14 total so far. 14, you hot ticket. Brenna is doing well. She has two jobs on campus. As you might all recall, Brenna is at Wentworth in downtown Boston, and it's a freshman year. She has two jobs on campus and is in two clubs, too. Oh, good for her. I bet she's meeting a lot of people. Hello to all watching. Keep up all your great work. Oh, and a few select, I know, Jean. I'm going to be a grandma, yay, almost 12 weeks along, doing well. So if anyone knows of where I can get Nightmare Before Time, Tim Burton fabric, let me know. It's her theme. That poor little baby. <laughs> Nightmare before time? You crack me up. Now, Carrie, this is an inside joke because Carrie loves Walking Dead, so I would expect no less. And now, without further ado, let's look at these beautiful quilts she's been making. Look at that. Carrie, I love it. So that's the holiday one. I love that. And then the row by row, which, again, this year was the water theme. <gasps> Beautiful. Oh, Carrie, I cannot. You have come so far in just such a little time of quilting. I love it. Look at that. Oh, and I love how you've got you've got a row by row down the side. Very nice. Ah, have a good trip to Maine. And good luck and congratulations on being a grandma or soon to be grandma. Hey, KK in San Diego. She's saying hi back. Oh, I'm so glad. 
Heard you mention my name with KB and new viewer, viewer Kathy K. My team is the Green Bay Packers. Oh, oh, the football team is on. So we've got the Cubs and the Green Bay Packers. She says she's working, she's watching from work as usual, and she loves the block. Thanks, and you crack me up watching from work. Should we all be so talented? Oh, Mom says, hi, Mom. Mom is out there. She says she'll be at Karen's from September 26th to October 4th. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe we could figure something out. <gasps> love your machine, says Lorna. She says, what a cool machine. I love the color, and it sounds great. Doesn't it? it and yet, yeah. So, thank you. Wish I had the room for all the machines I want. Thank you for showing us how to do the Y scene. You made it look easy. You and your sister are so talented. Did you get this from your mom? Oh, Lorna. Yeah. Yep, my mom can do anything. Um, oh, Maureen in Pennsylvania. Hi. With a suggestion for the name. We could call her Rosie for Rosie the Riveter. I like that idea. I like the name Rosie. Oh, Marquet, second post on the machine. So Marquet was the one who sent us information about the 301. She says, silly me, I forgot to say I'm going to see this machine tomorrow. I thought maybe. I didn't know if you were going tonight or tomorrow. Okay, said, good. If it hasn't been sold and if it runs good, I will bring her home. It will make my number two Singer 301. They are gear-driven machines, no belts. We'll keep you posted. Uh, which is why they're so good. This one does have a belt, right? Do I need to replace the belt? I'm so curious about that. I guess not unless it breaks, right? Um, okay, we'll keep you posted. So she says, no, Lynn, no. All it should do is open the faceplate that you were just talking about, and the top lid should just pop up. I could help you more if I knew the model number. Can you take a picture of the number and send it to me so I can get the number that I will need to help you find info on it? Did you get a manual with it? I love yours. Happy sewing, your friend Marquet. I will send you a picture underneath of the model number. I did not get a manual. I got everything but. I got the attachments. I got the rotary attachments, accessories, and the only manual it came with looks exactly like I've seen on the Morse machines which is this, directions for using the attachments. And that was it. So thank you, Marquet. All I have to do is open the faceplate. Is this it? Is that my, no. Is that my faceplate? I don't know what my faceplate is. Well, thank you, Marquet. I think we're coming to the top of the hour, and I want to make sure that I have said hello to everyone. The raggedy that Leslie is making is 36 inches. Had no transfer, so trace buttons for the eyes. Do what you can. Isn't that the truth? I love that. I love that. We are all, we can figure it out, right? She says she likes Karen's Batman costume. Good job. Do you hear that, KB? Keep going. Also like your new sewing machine in that block. We'll have to check it out, Leslie. Oh, excellent. Mom says thanks for the mug rug. You're welcome. MJ, hi. She says, just watching tonight, getting ready for a trip. I love watching again later and so. Thanks for all you do, Joanna in Oregon. Hi, a new Oregon viewer. Love to have you out there. Linda, Linda Griffin. She's watching tonight as a new floor was installed in her sewing room today and she doesn't have anything back in there yet. Well, that's a good excuse. Um, but she's too tired to continue. That I, I, Oh, she says, I did do some treadling earlier, but too tired to continue. Love your new sewing machine. $40 was a great price. I have a similar brother model that I found for $40 as well. It is such a workhorse. Speaking of which, Leslie in Framingham, a friend of Bob's and ours from way back, said she has a brother that she literally brought from the UK. It's her, it was her mother's. Same brother, she says it's a workhorse. Similar thing. Oh, she says, by the way, when you sew tonight, your camera is bouncing from that powerful machine. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Thank you for letting me know. I will, next time I use this machine, I'll put it on a different table. Sorry about that. That's pretty funny. 
Thanks for keeping us in your loop. Love to see and sew with you, Linda G. in California, sent from her quilt haven. Ah, thanks for sharing your time with me. Thank you. Oh, and one more before we call it a wrap from Maureen. She says she's almost done with both cross-stitch projects. Thanks for the inspiration. Oh, Maureen, that's awesome. Oh, oh Hummels. Look at those. Oh, Maureen, that's great. <coughs> oh, they are almost done. Well, they are done. Maybe a little bit more on his shoe, right? Beautiful. Well, as always, and even more so tonight, you all have inspired me. Thank you for sharing your pictures, and thank you for being a Fibercaster. Have a great weekend. Keep on being creative, and I'll see you on a recording next Friday night. I'll probably record it Thursday night, but I'll send a note in Facebook. If, you haven't if you're not following Facebook or you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do. That way we can stay in touch. Bye, everyone. Have a great week. Bye from my kitty. Here's my mouse. <laughs> this is the longest goodbye ever. Hang on. Oh, no. Oh, boy. <laughs>